Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Labs and back to our Playwright series. So in the last video, we have uh, seen that how to create a post call with the POSO class. If you notice that we are creating the object of the user class and then the user class is actually defined here. And then we have created this uh, POSO class here where we have, let's see, four uh, private, four, five, five, eight attributes are available. And then we have created uh, one constructor, one default constructor, and then uh, number of getters and setters also we have created that. What do you think about one thing? What if tomorrow I have uh, 10 different fields are there or 20 fields are there? So are you going to create number of constructors like this and comma separated values like this or so many getter and setter? It means for uh, 10 data fields or 10 private fields, variables we have to create uh, 20 getters and setters we have to create that so that's a quite of like lengthy code or boilerplate code we have we are writing here so can we minimize this code so for that what we can do we can use one external library that library is very popular in the market used by developers also and you can use in your automation for creating the pozo or lombok library so what i can do here i'll just open my pom.xml file so this is my pom file and here this lombok library i have added here so this is a Lombok uh, library we can add it. This is a dependency. You can get this dependency from the Maven also. We just need to supply like this, like Lombok uh, Maven dependency. You can search it on Google. And uh, here, the latest version of Lombok, you can get it from here. So you can see 1.18.26 that I'm going to use it. And uh, exactly, let's see, 2.6. I'm just going to update it here. When you update that, and you just need to do a Maven update, just click on Maven from here and then sync the Maven project. The respective library will be added in your project. Now, after that, it's like super simple and you will be amazed to see instead of writing this such a boilerplate code, boilerplate means such a lengthy code. Uh, can we shrink this code? Let's, we can do it. So what it will do, instead of user class, let's go into create another POSO class. For example, let's say I'm going to create a users class. And this users class I'm going to create with the help of with the help of Lombok. So I'll do one thing from the user class. These are the four or five attributes, whatever the attributes that you have, you have to maintain obviously first. Okay. Then after that, what I'll do, I'll just create some class level annotations. So what I can do at the rate, first of all, do you need no argument constructor? Yes. So you can define it. No argument based constructor. You can define it. Do you need all argument constructor? Yes. So it will automatically create the constructor with all argument with no argument means the default constructor also it will create that other than that <clears throat> i want all getter and setter also so you can use at the rate data annotation if you see at the rate data annotation will generate all the getters and setters automatically so you don't need to write it explicitly here and then other than that i really want to use the builder pattern also so you can write at the rate builder also here and that's it after that you don't need to worry about any two string method and nothing these annotations will take care of everything. <clears throat> so what I'll do now, that's it. Now you can see the difference between user.java and the users.java. Such a like just only these attributes we have to maintain only class variables. That's it. Okay. Now I'll do one thing. I'm going to create a test class. So let's quickly create a Java class here. And uh, the test class name, I'm going to write that create a post call or let's see create user a post call with a POSO with Lombok. So this is the test that I'm going to write. Okay. So everything will remain same that we did last time. The only thing is this time we are going to create with the, the object and all those things we are going to create with the help of a Lombok POSO class. So I'll do one thing that uh, whatever the code that we have written from here, all the request response assertions and everything we will take it from there and then paste it here. <clears throat> and then after that, what should I do? I have to create the user object. You don't need to create that user class object. You have to create that obviously, but how will you create that? Now I'm going to use a builder pattern here using the builder pattern, how to use this. So here you will see that users class is there users dot, right? And then you can use number of methods here let's see user dots builder method you can use it here and then after that user dot builder the moment you write dot 
and then you will get all the attributes of that particular users class. So for example, if I really want to enter the name, see, I'm getting the name here. So you can define the names like this. So let's see, I'm going to supply the name is a Naveen automation, something like this. And then I'm saying the email ID dot email. Let's write the hard coded email ID right now. Let's see Naveen automation at the rate gmail.com. Then after that dot, what is a gender? So let's supply the gender as male. And then the third at fourth attribute is, uh, what is the status? So status that I'm supplying that is active, for example, like this. And then after that, you have to write dot build over here. You must have seen these kind of, uh, method chaining concept in, uh, actions class in Selenium, <clears throat> like actions class dot send keys dot move to element dot do this and all those things you can do it here just, and then we write build dot perform. Same thing here. We are writing dot build here. So this is called a typical builder pattern. And now this dot build method with the help of these uh, four attributes, it will create the user object. And let's see what exactly dot build method is returning. It's saying, I'm going to give you the users class object here. Now you can store inside the users class object. Let's see users users is equal to this. That's it. Now it's super simple. And then after that, whatever the users class object that you have created the same users class object in the set data you have to supply here, right? We have already seen set data method where we can pass the any kind of Java object or class object or poso class object or Lombok poso class object. You can supply the string class also. I mean, JSON string also JSON object directly. Also, we can supply that. Okay. And hash map also we can supply. So we are supplying this uh, Lombok poso a pattern that we have created and we are supplying it here the URL after that we are getting a response and then same thing we are convert the response into the POSO that we have already seen in the last chapter. This is your deserialization and whatever the actual user that we are getting now we are comparing that get name is equal to the expected users dot get name and then get email ID. So this user is what the object of the POSO class that we created with the help of Lombok. And this actual user after deserialization that we have used here with the help of object mapper. And then we are doing the exact attribute by attribute comparison here. Perfect. Will this work? Let's see. The only thing is that we have to change this email, but let's see with this approach, is it really working or not? And then we will change the email also. So let's run it. One thing, I think my bearer token is already expired. So we will see the new bearer token as well. I think because I changed the token ID recently. So I'll update the token ID, but let's see, it should give me, yeah, see, so it's giving me the error it's saying 401 unauthorized. We are getting it. So let's do one thing. Let me update the token ID here. So I'll go to my agores.co.in and uh, I'm going to use it, my API token. And this is the new API token that I'm going to use it. Now I'll just update it here. Okay. Later on, we will see that. Uh, when we design the framework properly, that time we will supply the token from some properties file or we will store the token somewhere else or we will generate the token at the runtime. Okay, now let's run it again. Right now, we just want to concentrate on the topic that how to do a post call with the help of Lombok Pozo. Okay, Lombok Pozo classes. So let's see. The test got is started again. This time it should be passed. So yeah, setup is started. And then after that, create user test. And now it's getting 201. This is what we were expecting. And the test is absolutely working fine. Within a second, the test got passed here, which is absolutely fine. And you can see the response, user ID, we are getting name, email ID, gender, status, everything is fine. You really want to validate in your postman that also you can validate that. So this is a get with this particular user. And then when you send it, let me, Okay, invalid token. Let me update this particular token here as well. So I'll go to my headers and then uh, paste it here and then send it. Now you can see, yeah, perfect. Okay. Now the one last thing is uh, what we have to do. We have to update the email ID also, because again, if I really want to run it again, the same email ID will not be accepted. So that for email ID, the get random email ID, we have already created this function. So I'm just going to call this function here. And that's it. Perfect. Now you run this n number of times. It will always and always work properly here. So let's quickly see that. So the test got is started again. The setup is uh, done. And then after that, it will execute my test. Okay. So let's see this time it should create another user. 
So now you can see the email ID this time it's taking some random email ID like this. Perfect. And this is the user ID. All right. So go to this postman once again, paste this your ID. And then, yeah, this is a new user got created. So what do you think about this approach as compared to the previous one? In the previous one, with the help of uh, a POSO test that we have written, almost same. Here, we were just creating the object in the form of, uh, we were calling the constructor like this. But here today, you see the difference between this user.java and then this users.java, which is like drastically, we have improved number of lines, reusability and uh, uh, the number of uh, lines of uh, code that we are adding, like we have reduced, you just need to maintain the variables in your class and that's it. And these annotations will take care of everything. So make sure that, okay, you're using no argument constructor. It means default constructor, all argument constructor, and then uh, at the rate data will help you to create getter, setter and everything. And uh, builder pattern, at the rate builder pattern, annotation we are using to achieve the builder pattern. So that's what that, uh, this is a very standard way of uh, writing the uh, API automations that you just supply the, create the object here like this. You don't need to write so many setters and getters and all those things here. Perfect. Tomorrow in the patch call or in the put call, what we will do if I really want to update this particular user. So I'm going to use see set email or set gender and all those things. I can update it anytime. So see, I'm getting the setter automatically here. Although I don't have any setter here, but still this at the rate data will automatically create all the getter and setters. It will maintain internally. So we don't need to create it explicitly unnecessary. No need to write the boilerplate code again and again there. Right. So I'll do one thing. I'll just let me, uh, I'll just check in this particular code. Let me just uh, try that. Uh, if it is happening now, so I'm just going to check in now. So get add space dot and get commit minus M I'm saying that added code for a post call with a Lombok. Okay. With the Lombok API Pozo class. Okay. And now I'm going to get push origin to the main branch and then we are pushing the code. So code is up to date available and uh, yeah. So the code is uh, available here. You can go and check it on my application. I mean, on my uh, GitHub repository, Playwright Java API testing is there. Okay. If you really want to check it right away, I can show you. You can just clone this particular project. And then after that, you are absolutely good to go with that. So let's see github.com and uh, Playwright Java API testing. You can use it here. Okay. This one. And you can see that recently we just committed here. So the entire code is here. Just download it or clone this project and then start using. You can implement Playwright with API automation right away in your current project as well. Okay. I'll see you in the next video. Till then take care and please share this video with others. Subscribe to the channel. If you're liking this API series with Playwright, I'll prepare more and more videos on the API automation till then take care and God bless you all.